On this video, we talk about the challenges to answering the question, how do we heal from attachment injuries? It's gonna be a long video, four pages of notes to get through. Let's jump in, stay tuned. Welcome to the New Love Addiction. I'm Alan Robarge, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Let's talk about healing attachment injuries uh, and very specifically the question, how do we heal from attachment injuries? And that question itself brings a number of challenges. It is very difficult to answer that question. The easiest answer to the question, how do I heal from attachment injuries? is the response, it depends. It depends on you. It depends on your skills. It depends on your current level of development and maturity. It depends on your inner resources. It depends on your education and your uh, awareness of how to utilize healing information and integrate it. It depends on your particular triggers and your symptoms of trauma. Attachment injuries are about attachment trauma. And then if we just separate that out and take out the word attachment, we're working with trauma. So there is a very specific body component. Each person is different. So it becomes very challenging to be asked the question, uh, how do I heal? Many people who ask the question, they're looking for symptom relief. They're looking for uh, the pain, the struggle, the distress in their relationships, uh, the level of anxiety, uh, the preoccupied thinking, the obsessive thinking uh, that show up when we have an attachment injury that's looping in our brain, looping in our nervous system, and it is exhausting, it is tiring, it is a form of suffering. So the question that's being asked, how do I heal, is saying, how do I find some relief from this suffering? Some people, some of you, when you ask that question, you're looking for a recipe. You're looking for a step-by-step -step approach of, you know, step one, step two, step three. Follow these steps, create, you know, follow this recipe, and we will then uh, get the desired outcome that we are looking for. I am sorry. I offer empathy to you, I am sorry. It does not work like this. We are talking about maturing. We are talking about the development of the self and we are talking about how the development of the self was thwarted or had some obstacles and limitations placed in its way. So it's not so much about just remove the obstacles and limitations, but in fact, we are talking about reparenting or even parenting yourself for the first time. And we can take the word parenting out of it. That gives us a kind of framework. We're talking about maturing. So the question of how do I heal is saying, well, how do I mature? How do I grow? How do I become a self? How do I mature? into a stronger sense of self. Well, how the hell do you answer that question for each individual person? It is so challenging because it's based upon your needs, it's based upon your skills, it's based upon where you're at developmentally. If we're working with trauma, it's based upon your trauma triggers and your trauma symptoms. If we're talking about attachment styles, it's based upon your adaptive attachment style. People behave differently as far as how they come into new experiences of relationships. Let me slow down a minute here. I realize that I'm talking fast. I have four pages of, of uh, information to get through. This might get a little overwhelming. Let's slow down and just acknowledge empathy to you. One, you're in suffering, you're in pain, you're struggling with this attachment trauma, you're struggling with attachment injuries that are playing out in your life and in your relationships. And uh, like most people, including myself, you perhaps have gone through the last 20, 25 years or longer uh, experimenting with relationship and there's these reoccurring patterns that end in grief and end in uh, great struggle 
around adult relating and how you create adult relationships. And this might include some history of feeling like you don't belong, uh, some incredible sense of isolation and loneliness. And there also might even be a struggle with your self-worth that you identify with shame. You identify uh, with feeling uh, not so good about yourself. So if you come to this, if you're even asking the question, I offer empathy to you. I acknowledge the uh, goodness of the question and that also you perhaps have frustration not getting a clear answer. So I am going to do my best to explain why the answer is not as clear as we would like, why the answer is not a recipe to follow, why the answer is not uh, follow these steps and you can then eradicate what you don't like and then move on with your life. It doesn't work like that. And let me explain to you why it doesn't work like that. Let me give you some analogies or comparisons, some questions to think about. If we are asking ourselves, how do I heal from attachment trauma? Uh, we can begin to compare that question to another question, the question of how do you successfully parent a child? How do you successfully parent and raise a child? I had a pause there because I couldn't read my writing for the word raise, that's why. How do you successfully parent and raise a child? Well, you know you can't answer that. You would say, well, it depends. Depends on what your skills as a parent. It depends on what are the needs of the child. It depends on what are the resources that you have available to you, both internally as a parent, and then also externally, the resources that you have that you could offer and give to the child. It depends on the support system, the schooling, the education, the other people in the child's life. It depends on the child's health. So this, how do, how do you successfully raise a child is a similar type of question when we say, well, how do I heal from attachment trauma? It becomes rather daunting and overwhelming to, to even begin to know how to answer that. Another example that we might have is how do you fulfill the duties of being a parent? We could list a hundred things. How do you fulfill the duties of being a parent? That type of question, the impossibleness of it, the very broad, vast range. And if we had a room of you know, 10 people or 20 people who happen to be parents and we, we pose the question to you, how do you fulfill the duties of a parent? We very possibly could get 20 different answers, not because those answers are incorrect or wrong, but because everyone is coming at it from a different skill set or from a different vantage point. So when we start to break down, when we start to look at how do I heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma, it is very unique to me. It is very unique to you. And you have to begin to look at what, what is your skill set? What vantage point are you looking at? Uh, what, what point of view are you beginning to assess this attachment trauma and this attachment injury in your life? This is why I'm making a series of videos uh, called, uh, you know, creating a model for self-directed healing. You need to educate yourself and guide yourself as far as what piece of the puzzle is next or how to orient the piece of the puzzles. I can help you name some of the pieces of the puzzle, but ultimately we need your inner wisdom. We need your inner healer self. We need your inner therapist to help determine this is the next piece, this is not the next piece. Now, if you're working with a therapist, of course, that could be incredibly beneficial because that's a therapist's job. There's such an idea in therapy referred to as pre-therapy, or we could think of it as an assessment period or an intake period. This could last uh, minimally one session. It could last three to six sessions. Depending on a client's need, we could be doing pre-therapy for three to six months, depending on the therapist orientation. If they do long-term work from a framework of, of doing long-term therapy, three months to really look at 
what is your history what's your skill set where are you coming from uh, what do you have available to you in order to integrate new healing information the therapist's job is to meet you in that place and to find out where you specifically are at. The therapist does not do this the same way for each person. It's unique to each client. So therefore the answer to the question, how do I heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma, you have to be your own therapist and you have to assess, well, where are you at in your current level of maturity and development and with your particular style and level of triggers around relationship trauma and how do you work with them what are your skills to work with your body what are your skills to integrate new information what are your skills to educationally understand healing processes that's going to be different and unique for each person which makes it so so challenging uh, for for someone else to give you the answer, the direct answer, how do I heal from an attachment injury? Let's go back to a couple more, um, one more example of a question uh, to sort of create a framework of why this question is so challenging. To use another analogy, how do you repair a broken roof? So that's sort of like the question. If you say, well, how, how do I repair, how, how do I heal from attachment trauma? Uh, we're saying, how do we repair a broken roof? The answer is it depends. We do not know how to repair that broken roof until we know what exactly is the very specific problem that we are addressing first or addressing in total. So if you call the, the roof contractor, if you call the roof repair uh, man or woman, whoever's repairing the roof, and you say it needs fixed, and they say, yes, I can, I can help you, and then you say, how do you repair the roof? they're going to say well i need to know i need some more information about the age of the house the wear and tear on the house they're going to want to know is there a hole in the roof is it leaking is that what you're repairing they're going to want to know was there a place in the design of the roof that water collected and this puddle of water has been collecting there for years and it has just it's been rotting through the roof and so we need to fix this problem of this pool of water that keeps collecting in the same place in the same area every time or they're going to look at the foundation of the house and they're going to say well, the foundation has shifted over the years. And when the foundation shifted and when the walls shifted, the wall and the roof have now separated. And because the roof stayed stationary and the wall and the foundation moved in another direction, they have pulled apart. So now we need to fix the foundation. We're not even fixing the roof yet. We're not even fixing the uh, how the roof has pulled away from the walls. We're fixing the foundation of the house. This is a very good example. That's exactly what's going on when we ask the question, how do I heal from attachment trauma? We need to understand what is the history that has gone into creating your unique set of challenges around relationship. This is why someone on the receiving end of this question will have a very hard time giving you a straightforward answer. Let's look at what are the different factors, things to think about of it depends, why it would depend or be different from one person to the next. And if this information so far is, has not already been overwhelming, to give you a heads up, potentially this is going to be overwhelming. I really wanted to cover as many bullet points as I, as I can. And, and in the spirit of being helpful, in the spirit of really waking you up and say, you have to look at all these different areas of your life and how we're, it's coming together in such a way to say, this is about your maturity as a self, your maturity as a person. This is about how you're growing, not only in relationship, not only 
only in releasing yourself from very painful symptoms or struggle or distress in relationship, but we're talking about big picture. How are you in this world as a mature person? How do you have a stronger sense of self? And connected to that, how do you love yourself? And in that self-love, how do you also show up in relationship with others? Even the idea of this conversation is overwhelming. It goes back to the question about parenting. As a parent, how do you successfully raise a healthy child? Well, that is so challenging to answer. You know, it's like, well, you know, we could write a whole book on that. There's so many things to think about. And quite honestly, that's the case that that's what happens when we're talking about attachment trauma and attachment injuries because we're talking about relationship and we're talking talking about how do you show up as a mature self in relationship what are your relationship skills and what are your skills for how you relate to yourself and how do you nurture yourself that inherently is overwhelming nonetheless here we go hopefully it's not too overwhelming we're gonna talk about why it depends, what different things you need to think about uh, when you begin to answer the question, how do I heal from attachment trauma and attachment injuries? It depends on a number of factors. It depends on your emotional maturity and your level of development. It depends on your history of what happened to you in the past, and that also includes what didn't happen to you it depends on your skills and your inner resources. What do you have available to you to assist in your healing process? Many people have different tools in their tool bag. You might need to take an inventory of what you have and what you don't have and realize before you even try to work on healing an attachment injury or attachment trauma, you need to shore up some of those skills. It depends, your healing depends on your intelligence and your education about healing processes and how to use that healing information. If you do not have a sensibility about you, we're talking about the art of healing. We're talking about engaging, how to apply and integrate helpful healing information. If you do not have that skill, then you need to work on how do you actually do that. If you don't have that skill, it will then influence how you are able to begin to work on and come up with a plan to answer the question, how do I heal from an attachment injury and attachment trauma? It depends on your support system. We do not exist in a vacuum. We do not live alone. This is not something that you only do by yourself in your head where you're trying to do everything and figure everything out. Now, I am a huge component of this idea of a model of self-directed healing, and I am a huge component of you putting yourself in the driver's seat and you taking charge of what you need and tapping into your inner healer, your inner wisdom self, and your inner therapist. That being said, you still need other people. You need healing communities. You need organizations that are encouraging and encourage a positive, healthy relating. And you need other healers, other they could be uh, friends or other people who work in kind of healing modalities, he the healing arts. And it could also mean work with a therapist. So I'm not saying that you have to do it alone, but you do need to have some kind of inner innate guide that is tapping into your wisdom that's helping you figure out what direction to go. So if you have a support system that's going to shore up and help you um, learn new things because we learn from other people, we need a support system. Another reason why it's challenging to answer that question is it depends on your ego strength and your ability to withstand and hold your inner world experience. Uh, this means being able to stay present when something is so overwhelming, pain, overwhelmingly painful and so that you do not implode. So that when you discover these very haunting truths that come with grief, the haunting truth 
of being ignored, neglected, abandoned, abused, or betrayed in your family? Do you actually have the ego strength? And that's a, a, a clunky word for saying the ability to maintain your internal container, to maintain a presence to welcome in that level of grief. Oftentimes it's very crushing. If you don't have that kind of inner strength, well, that's something you need to work on. And by right of working on it, you're supporting your development, you're supporting your healing. And over time, you will be able to also, you will be supporting your own unique process of healing from attachment injuries and attachment trauma. It also depends, answering that question depends on your threshold for emotional pain and what you do when you cannot manage that pain. So a most simple, easy example is for those who reach a threshold point where they can no longer endure their own crushing grief or the haunting loneliness that comes with the realization of working with an attachment injury is that they check out and they dissociate. And one way that they check out is they seek self-medication and self-medication comes in the form of substances or addictive behaviors. So we need to be honest with ourselves to what degree do you begin to move into the attachment trauma based upon your ability to manage the feedback or the feelings or the intensity of the experience that you're going to have when you enter that content. If you have very short capacity or a short threshold to engage with the intensity of that grief and those difficult feelings and your style of working with those feelings is to check out and to seek out self-medication through some kind of addictive behavior, well, you need to address that. You cannot focus on healing attachment injuries if you're also simultaneously using your addiction as some kind of crutch or a reliable source of self-medication. That would be where you place your focus. That's your answer. Where do, how, how do you heal attachment injuries and attachment trauma? Well, if you need to look at your capacity to actually manage the intensity of the feelings, well, that's your answer. That's where you place your focus. It depends. It all depends on you. Here's another one. Your unique, it depends on your unique set of trauma triggers and your um, unique trauma symptoms. So, people have different trauma triggers. How do you heal from attachment trauma? Well, it has to do with how do you experience it being activated and triggered? What type of relationships, what type of exchanges, with what type of people, in what scenarios? That will give you information then about how you need to begin a plan of healing to not be, not repeat being in relationships that are going to invite those same types of triggers. It also depends on your attachment style. So very simplistically, we could, we, we know that there's such thing as a preoccupied anxious attachment style, and there is such thing called an avoidant attachment style. These two groups of people are going to have a different orientation and a response for how they would want to heal their attachment trauma. So to answer the question, how do I heal from attachment trauma? I want to know, well, is your style generally a preoccupied anxious orientation to relating? Or is your style a bit more avoidant? And that could be fearful avoidant or that could be dismissive avoidant. That will influence, depending on your, uh, an attachment style is an adaptive style. It is how you have adapted to being in relationship to when your relationship needs are not met. And they have different presentations. So depending on your presentation will inform or determine what you need. And potentially a person who more orients to being preoccupied, anxiously attached from someone who is avoidantly attached 
are going to go down two different healing paths in order to heal from their attachment trauma. They are going to go down two separate healing paths where they both need to learn different lessons, however, to achieve the same outcome. But if I do not know that, if you do not know that for yourself, it's going to become very, very challenging to answer the question, how do I heal this? Because we need this other preliminary information first. Another thing to think about if you say, well, it depends. How do we answer this question? It depends. It depends on how much time you invest into nurturing yourself and your healing lifestyle. This is not something like uh, get a recipe, uh, get a, a list of steps, step one, step two, step three. And when I say steps, I don't mean 12 steps. I'm not talking about the 12 step program. I'm just saying, you know, getting some kind of information uh, that is mapping out, you know, we'll do A, do B, do C, do D, and then ta-da, it all goes away. If you do not take time, if you do not slow down in your life, if you do not realize that you have to invest in getting to know yourself, in getting to know your attachment trauma, in educating yourself, in sitting with your body, in monitoring your triggers, triggers, in journaling, in reading books, in joining support groups, in working in therapy. If you're not doing these things to nurture your own healing process, well, then it becomes very, very challenging because how would a person, how would I know on the receiving end, if you asked me, how do I heal from attachment injury? Well, I would say it depends on how much time are you investing in healing work? And, and are you able to nurture, are you able to nurture a sense of um, presence and a sense of uh, committing uh, to giving yourself the attention that you deserve? If you don't do this, then I will say, well, that's your answer. That's the piece you work on. You need to look at your calendar. You need to look at your life and say, I need chunks of time. I need to carve out chunks of time where I'm taking care of me, where I'm nurturing me. And in that process, in that time, you then will be able to discover things about your attachment trauma, discover things about what it is like to work with an attachment injury, begin to experiment with uh, some healing modalities or experiment with some healing information that you can apply and you try it out. It's like going to the gym. It's like building muscle. If you're not investing the time, you're not going to get the outcome that you're looking for. Another reason to answer the question, how do we heal from attachment trauma and attachment injuries? And we know the answer is it depends. Another thing it depends on, it depends on your grieving skills. What are your grieving skills? How do you grieve? What is grief? And if you do not have these skills or if you have limited skills, you have to then be able to identify how do you increase those skills? So this work, Healing and attachment injury and attachment trauma are linked to releasing and coming into deeper pockets or a deep ocean of grief. We are grieving relationships. We are grieving how we have missed out on feeling connected to other people and or being in families where we were ignored, betrayed, abused, abandoned, etc. If we say we want to heal an attachment injury, then we are also saying, I invite grief. I am willing to feel the intensity of these years and years of missed opportunity where I have felt isolated and disconnected and I have lived with a certain level of loneliness that has even turned into a kind of toxic loneliness. And because my family was not present to me, because my family did not offer emotional attunement to me, I have then also incorporated a sense of my, my orientation, how I feel about myself is shame based. So now I'm healing from shame. I need to have grieving skills to even begin to work with this content. So that's your answer. You ask the question, how do I heal from attachment trauma and attachment injuries? 
And if you uh, can, if you're challenged to know what exactly are grieving skills and how to, if you're challenged to actually how to, into, how to inventory them, well then that's your answer, that's your work. That's the place that you focus on. Another thing to think about, it depends on how much time it takes for your mind to integrate new experiences. So it might take you three months to integrate a piece of the puzzle in your development, in your development of the self, in you learning to strengthen your sense of self. Uh, if you are learning to treat yourself more kindly and you are practicing boundaries and loving yourself and in the process, you're looking at your trauma triggers and the body experience of the distress and the panic and the anxiety and how you work with your nervous system. This takes time. So you have to accommodate how much time does it take for you to integrate this new information? Because if we have three, four, 10 different people, uh, potentially each person is, is integrating at their own speed, at their own level of development. Again, this is where a good therapist comes in, or this is the job of a good therapist, is to be able to track your pacing and to track your ability to integrate new information. And when you come to therapy the next week, or if you go every two weeks, when you return to therapy, the therapist is going to notice if you have integrated some of the information and the learning from the previous session or the previous sessions. If you haven't, then that very clearly lets the therapist know we're moving at a bit of a slower pace and you need more time to integrate the information, the input that you are receiving. That's why it is so hard to answer this question, how do you heal? Because it's impossible to know. I do not know what your, your pacing is. I do not know your capacity to integrate new information. Sometimes we receive new information and within five days, within two weeks, we, we've, told, we've had this like amazing, you know, kind of maturing, an aha moment happens and we just, wake up to some, we just sort of evolve. Other times, and I'm sure many people watching this video can relate, you could work on something for years and you even work on it and you think you've integrated it, you think that you've, you know, the, the, the analogy of layers of the onion, you know, you thought, well, you, I thought I dealt with this for years, you know, years ago, I thought I put this behind me and now something else happens, it gets reactivated, it gets re-triggered. And oh, here we go again. Now I'm relating to it again. And this, this requires patience. So to answer the question, how do you heal attachment injuries and attachment trauma? Well, it depends on your level of patience. It depends on your capacity to work with whatever your pacing is. And you might be frustrated. You might want this to happen to today. You might have wanted it to happen yesterday. You might be willing to give yourself two months, three months. Some people sign up for therapy and they think, well, in six months, I'm gonna have this behind me. Well, good luck with that. I don't, I, you know, this is, I take a lifetime view of healing. This is a healing lifestyle. This is a commitment that to say I'm healing for the rest of my life, that's saying I'm participating consciously in my maturing as a human being. And I'm realizing certain areas of my growth that might need a little more shoring up. I might notice certain areas uh, in my growth that I might refer to as my shortcomings that I need to uh, nurture and strengthen. But overall, healing work is not something that I'm just going to enter, get it over with and move on. It's more of an orientation of consciousness. This is why for many people healing work is spiritual work because we're really talking about the development of, of your bigger essence, the uh, development of your spirit, the development of your, um, your, your greater sense of self. And when I say self, I mean your capital S self, not small S self. Lastly, I have 13 of them. Here's number 13. Uh, when we talk about it depends to answer the question, how do I heal from attachment trauma and attachment injuries? And we say it depends. It depends on how toxic 
your relationships currently are and it depends on how toxic your family and friends are. It depends on how toxic the current system is that you're living with or you're living in. If you want to heal, if you want better relating and better relationship skills, uh, let's use the analogy of planting a garden. If you want a healthy garden, you need to make sure that there are uh, minerals in the soil. You need to make sure there's enough sunshine and there's enough, enough water uh, in, uh, in the garden or for the plants in the garden. And we're looking at this whole system, the whole ecosystem. So you could have really great, wonderful intentions uh, to know that, you, that your maturity, that your being depends on maturing and that you're, you're completely, totally committed and on board with growing and being the better person that you can be to tapping into your potential and evolving. And if that means confronting attachment injuries and attachment trauma, you're on board, you're gonna do it. However, you have to be honest with yourself what's going on with the people around you. So this very particular point is similar to when I said you need a support system earlier. This is the flip side of that statement. If we say it depends on if you have supportive encouragement from other people who are shoring up your process, the flip side of that is do you have the opposite? Do you have toxic people. If your attachment injury and your attachment trauma came out of a family system that is dysfunctional and came out of family relationships with other people in your family who ignored you, uh, who betrayed you, who abandoned you, who neglected you, or who abused you, and yet you're still living in that family. You're still living in that family system. You're still participating in the dysfunction. And I'm assuming you're not participating to the degree that you once did because you're able to get out, take breaks from it. You're able to have your own life, uh, you know. But many people are still sucked into the same dysfunctional system that created the attachment trauma. So if you ask the question, how do I heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma? We will say it depends on if you are still reinforcing the environment and, and reinforcing uh, the system that was set up in your life to create the attachment trauma. You have to answer that question. And if you very clearly know that that's not the case and that you're getting a certain dose or a certain consistent level of toxic dysfunctional relating in your life, well, then that's your answer to the question, how do I heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma? You need to find some healthy boundaries and healthy, healthy separation and distance yourself from that level of toxicity. And you can't move forward in going into the vulnerable places. You can't move forward moving into the, the deep, heartfelt grief of this, of this healing work if you're simultaneously taking on more toxicity and more dysfunction. So that's about saying you need to look at things in terms of a system. You need to look at, from a systems theory perspective, uh, what, where are you letting in good nourishment and where is some toxic energy coming in that's impacting and limiting your ability to grow and mature. That was the overwhelming information that I had for you, 13 items. Finally, after all of that, and you're still with me in this video, after all of looking at the, the, you know, the incredible number of moving parts to assess what is your unique path, I will now finally answer the question to the best of my ability, some areas and things to think about for the question, how do I heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma? Attachment injuries were created in relationship. They were created in relationships where that fell short 
that did not provide for you emotional connection. If we're talking about abuse, sexual abuse, extreme emotional abuse, um, slightly a different category, there's going to be some other sub points. I'm not going into that in this video. But for sake of, of saying emotional developmental trauma of not getting your relational needs met in such a consistent chronic way that you now your nervous system has adapted in such a way that it elicits or shows trauma symptoms. How do you heal that? If, if the trauma occurred in relationship, healing needs to occur in corrective relationships. We were denied from a neurophysiological brain functioning example. It is referred to as limbic resonance. Another word that we can use here is emotional attunement. When two people are in harmony, when they are connected, when they are emotionally present and aware and uh, open to each other, the brain syncs up. And quite honestly, I don't know how it does it. I've read about this multiple times. Supposedly there's research that explains how this works. Nonetheless, we have an experience. We can feel it in our body and you know what it's like. You've had it. You've had it before, even if it's fleeting, even if it's not consistent. When we're really connected with another person and we are able to feel safe and we feel trust and we feel warm and we feel love and we feel understood, we feel seen, known and heard. That's referred to as limbic resonance. And you can think of a child you can think of a baby, think of an infant, and the mother and the child are connected through their eyesight. They're, connect, they're looking at each other. And let's say the baby coos, the baby makes a noise, and then mom makes a noise back, and then the baby smiles, and then mom smiles back. There is this incredible communication going on back and forth. And sometimes mom initiates connecting and the child responds back through smiling and laughing. Sometimes the child initiates connecting through smiling and laughing, and then mom follows and mirrors that. There's this back and forth mirroring. When we do this, our brain is creating what's called limbic resonance. We're resonating with each other. Again, the other word that's used here is emotional attunement. A component of how this happens is mirroring, emotional mirroring, so that when mom smiles, the baby smiles. When the baby laughs, mom laughs. There's this back and forth mirroring. I see you. I see how you're responding. I'm going to join you there and respond the same way. If you are sad and crying, I am going to be able to enter the sadness. We are going to feel connected and attuned. What is going on? I hear your sadness. I see that you're crying. Oh, this moment is really difficult. Please tell me more. What's happening? And then maybe even, you know, I'm so overwhelmed by the news that I receive that I too start crying or I shed a tear. And then I'm mirroring back to the other person, this back and forth exchange. This is healthy relating. This is reliable relating. This calms our nervous system down. This helps us create emotional regulation. When we do not have this, we have emotional dysregulation. When we do not have this, we have a sense of dissonance, a kind of emotional dissonance. We have a disconnect. We feel unsettled. And then also that's when the anxiety kicks in. It's called primal panic. Uh, this person is not relating to me. I keep mirroring. I keep trying to engage and create invitations to connect and the person is not connecting back. Oh, my nervous system is now activated and my nervous system is feeling unsafe here. Why is this person shut down? Why is this person unavailable? Why is this person withdrawn? Why is this person ignoring me? So how do you heal attachment injuries and attachment trauma? You need to increase the number of experiences where you can have reliable, healthy, emotional attunement and share limbic resonance with a safe person. Many people choose a therapist 
because that's what the therapist is trained for. The therapist's job is to really be available and present to you so that you can begin to practice and let in the risk and the vulnerability of softening, letting down your guard to actually let in that level of emotional exchange. If you were hurt in the past, if you were with people who were unreliable, chances are you're not going to do this very easily or readily, or chances are you're going to have a bit of a barrier to give yourself permission to really go there because it's life or death stakes. You know from your history you were hurt in this place. So for you to practice letting in that level of emotional attunement, emotional connection, emotional harmony takes a bit of work and risk and courage. And so this is why we choose, we pick a therapist. This is why we do it with a therapist. It does not have to be only with a therapist. You could do this with good friends. You could do this with a reliable, loving partner. You could do this with other family members who are safe and who are not toxic. You can also do this with organizations. Let's say you belong to a church and you feel connected to the congregation as a whole. You feel so supported by the fellow parishioners that you're actually having a kind of limbic resonant experience by right of just going to your church. Or let's say it's a choir group. It's a, you, go, you, jo you go to this choir every Thursday night and you rehearse for three hours and the experience of shared voices, everyone singing together, smiling at each other, helping each other out on the music. Hey, I can't, I can't figure out this note. Can you help me? Oh, sure, I could help you. And when that happens, it triggers our brain to say, we're connected to this person. How do you heal? attachment injuries and attachment inju uh, attachment trauma you need more experiences that allow you to practice having corrective experiences that increase the opportunities for emotional attunement another way to answer this is you need trauma education how do you heal from attachment injury and attachment trauma you need to understand trauma. It is not mostly psychologically based. It's not based on your thinking. It is more based on the neurobiology and the physiology of what's going on in your body. And so how do you heal attachment injuries and attachment trauma means you need some skills. You need to educate yourself to these skills of certain ways to attend and pay attention to the body processes to the trauma symptoms. There are different modalities, a number of them overlap, a number of them share certain ideologies, but to name ways to do some research, look into Peter Levine's work. He created uh, what's called somatic experiencing. Uh, you can uh, Google his name, go into Amazon, look at a number of his books, but something, a, a healing modality, a form of therapy that's body-based and intended to process trauma triggers, trauma symptoms, trauma responses in the body. Another one is called sensory motor psychotherapy. The creator of that is Pat Ogden. We also have EMDR therapy, which stands for uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. There are a number of books, including there are some articles and books related to attachment focused EMDR. So we have Peter Levine, uh, we have um, Pat Ogden's sensory motor. There's also a modality called Hakomi, uh, working with body, really slowing it down, paying attention to body processes. So um, there is a modality of, of psychotherapy called Hakomi. Also, there are uh, there is a form of therapy called Gestalt therapy, and there are a number of techniques and components. Um, originally, the, the Gestalt information was not so heavily rooted in solely being a trauma, uh, trauma a, a modality for healing trauma. However, a Gestalt has evolved the same way everything else has evolved and incorporated the research of how to work uh, with trauma and with uh, the uh, body sensation. But there's, there's some, the, the general, the approach 
of a gestalt therapy can be very helpful here as well. There are a number of researchers uh, who explain how the brain works and working with the trauma. Um, Dan Siegel, John Breer, uh, Babette Rothschild, um, Bessel van der Kolk. If you want to educate yourself on trauma, look into who these people are, look into these modalities of healing, and that will give you some roadmap and information for how do you begin to heal from attachment injuries and attachment trauma. Next, you need to know, I have two more for the sake of time to give you a heads up, two more. Stages of development. I like Erickson's stages of development. If we're talking about healing attachment trauma, we're saying that your development and your maturity was somehow impacted through relational emotional trauma that has impacted your bigger, greater process of maturing and maturity. And so now we're going to look at what is the development of the self? What is life span development. And then we also want to break that down and to look at, well, what is childhood development? Erickson's stages of development can be very helpful here. Uh, it breaks it down into multiple tasks and multiple challenges that each child needs to learn and needs to move through. If what I like about Erickson stages of development is that if you missed out on something, it is designed in such a way, it, it has a, a, a theoretical orientation or a belief built into it that you can revisit previous stages that did not go so well or previous stages that uh, you perhaps might have some um, experiences lacking and you can re you can invite new experiences, new corrective experiences to make up for what you didn't get. This information is very, very helpful. So to answer the question, how do I heal from uh, emotional or no, how do I heal from uh, uh, trauma, uh, attachment trauma and attachment injuries to understand where are you at in your development? And if you can reference Erickson's stages of development, that can begin to break down, oh yeah, I, I need to revisit this stage in my life. I need to look at, well, what does a child need to learn here? I did not learn it as much as I could have. I need to court some new corrective experiences to make that happen. Very lastly, this is going to be similar point to what I said before about living in a toxic family system. In order to heal from attachment trauma, you need to understand the context in which it was created. You need to understand the dysfunctional family system and how that supported and endorsed because it's, it's most likely generational. Uh, this, these types of attachment injuries do, do not usually just appear randomly. This is a long lineage of, uh, of, of attachment um, trauma being passed down from generation to generation. So if you want to heal your own pattern of attachment trauma and attachment injuries, it, it, you need to understand and know how to work with where did it come from in your own family system. This is all the information, very overwhelming, very long uh, video. Um, if you like this video, um, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have more videos like this coming on the way. The beauty about this, uh, what we shared tonight, and the fact that it is so overwhelming and so dense of material, is you always can pause the video and you can always watch it again. Um, I feel very uh, compelled and invested to help people answer this question. And at the same time, it um, I can feel the frustration of those who do not get a clear answer because it is challenging and it is so much information. And we are ultimately talking about how do I mature and grow as a human being? And that is a really daunting question to ask. 
Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, if you want to join a Facebook group to discuss these ideas with other lovely uh, people who are exploring these ideas and they share their wisdom and their insights with each other, please join a Facebook group of the name The New Love Addiction. And then lastly, if you want to learn more about me, please go to my website, which is alanrobarge.com. Thank you for watching the video. I know it's long and I will see you next time.